Alrighty folks, it's uh, Lee Maddox here for Real News Australia and today I'm joined with uh, an inventor and a uh, local man who lives in uh, the south side of Logan in Jimboomba by the name of Peter Ovik. Peter, thanks for joining us today. Uh, first of all, just tell us a, a little bit about yourself. You're an inventor and you've created a hydrogen fuel cell, is that correct? Yeah. Well, actually, um, in America they call these uh, fuel cells, but I was talking to a Chinese person and he was wanting to translate it into Chinese, and he recommended that we use generator rather okay. as, as description rather than fuel cell because uh, it came across better in, in Chinese. Okay, so it's a and, hydrogen generator. We'll call it. Yeah, we'll call it from now on. <laughs> yeah. So uh, um, China has uh, is a potential big customer anyway because they have so much pollution there, and we can run uh, hydrogen generated gas from water in while they are burning coal in coal fire power station and that will clean up the air and no more pollution so, so basically will make it a clean coal industry yeah at an extremely cost effective price yeah. so we're talking yeah. we're talking minimal amount of water here aren't we in to create uh, this hydrogen sort of system there is almost 2000 liters of gas in one liter of water so there is massive amount of energy in in wow. in, in water so you theoretically then if you had a <coughs> hydrogen powered car for example you wouldn't even need a liter of of water, would you? Would you even even no, less than No, it, it uses very little water because it produces so much gas. So take us through that process of how that actually works, if you could. Well, um, the electrolysis is the principle of uh, like it is a molecular molecular stage. The 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 glue which holds the molecules together. Once you put the electricity there. The, suddenly the molecules separate and they become gas. And that technology has been known for a long, long time, actually. But, uh, of course, uh, oil companies doesn't particularly like any competition. And I don't think government like to miss out on any uh, tax either, because right. on fuel there is a lot of tax, you see. That's right, yeah. There's something to do with uh, roughly 50-something cents in every yeah. um, litre of petrol, every, you know, every dollar we spend on petrol that goes to um, the taxation. That's right. Yeah. So um, if we start to run around without pollution and without any cost, I mean, we pay only three cents a litre for water delivered to our house, to the government or to the council. Mm -hmm. And if you divide that into almost 2,000... Litres of actual fuel. Yeah, yeah. Per, from one litre of water, that would become very, very cheap uh, uh, fuel. Now, this, this is one of the... Hydrogen fuel cells, I guess you yeah, call it. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's actually uh, elements in there, and you have the water inside that O-ring. You feed water in here, and the gas comes out there. And you put, you put the 12 volt uh, uh, directional current, you yep. know, uh, on the outside, and the water and the electricity go through the water, and it, and it just bubbles up. Yeah, right, okay. So it's pretty, it seems like a very basic and yeah. simple sort of design, yeah. but incredibly efficient at the same time. Yeah. yeah. So now you've created a vehicle with this engine, you, well, you haven't created a vehicle, you've put this engine in a vehicle, is that correct? Well, I made an electric car some years ago, right. and um, I've actually sold it, that's no, no longer mine. And um, so now I was working on this as a hybrid, still run it on on petrol or mm -hmm. diesel or whatever you have, but feeding in the gas into the engine via the air intake, mm -hmm. and that mixes with the fuel inside the engine. Right. And um, we discovered that the oil didn't get dirty when we were doing that. So that's when I rang up CSIRO and spoke to one of the, the chief, uh, chief scientists, scientists yeah. and he said, oh, we've known this for a long time, that if you feed gas in while you're burning coal, the coal burn clean. So that's what I uh, would like to implement because, uh, particularly in China, they got a massive, very bad air pollution problem. Yeah. So, they, so let's just recap that very quickly. So the CSIRO, which is obviously where our chief science body here in Australia, they are extremely well aware that this type of technology exists, that it's uh, it works, that it's clean, and that we could be using it for for clean fuel right here, right now. Why aren't they doing it? What do you reckon? Why, what's the reason they're not doing it? Well, uh, like I said, the tax is probably. Uh, I m remember Bjelke Peterson mm -hmm. and his uh, his so car. Dark, yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 
I've heard rumors that uh, the people from Canberra came and actually put the spanner in the wheel there. Yeah. And and that would the government would miss out on a lot of tax if they suddenly don't. So the, need. again, it's, this is about taxation revenue. So the, the government's afraid they're going to miss out on on revenue income here from us yeah. via the taxes of yeah. this sort of industry. Yeah. Okay. Now you've also um, tried to get the stamp of approval from, I guess, the uh, Queensland, the, Queensland Transport. Yeah, it? Queensland so Transport. Queensland, you tried to get the stamp of approval to have this. Um, is it the hybrid you were talking about? Yeah, this, yeah. yeah. And they wouldn't give it to you, would they? That's right. I got that in writing because he sent me, and I actually asked him if I got um, because they would not approve it. So I asked him. What um, I wasn't allowed to come into the office, by the way. I had to communicate by telephone or email. Yep. And uh, that's fine because emails you can refer back to, you know. Yep. So you have a paper trail, yeah. So, so um, uh, he said that um, they would not approve on it on on safety grounds. Well, my system is an on-demand system. It's not stored in in tanks. There is no hydrogen storage, so, so I consider it's very safe. So they so they main concern was that you you know they're, they're sitting there thinking oh we, we hydrogen is so flammable so explosive you know we can't have this stored in a vehicle driving around everywhere yet they're more than happy to have a, a an lpg gas tank sitting right behind drivers right now in, in half the vehicles in the country you know yeah uh, it's, it's interesting isn't it yeah so they're happy to have that sitting there but um they won't have your yours sitting there which doesn't even store hydrogen it's you so like you said it's on demand so it's only giving you the gas when you need the gas in very small amounts, too, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, incredible, isn't it? Uh, and why, why do you think that, um, that that is? Why why didn't they give you, even though you could prove that it was safe and effective, why do you think that they didn't give you that approval? Well, uh, my theory is that, that that particular public servant, if he okayed something which become a controversy or controversial, he might uh, jeopardize his, secur his job security yeah, there. Right. So if he says no... Nothing happened. It's quite safe. So he goes along with his <laughs> everyday job, safe as safe as everything else. Yeah, okay. But if he goes and approves something like this, then his neck's on the line. And of course, then the next person comes along and makes another safe engine, and he probably loses his job. So yeah, that's what it comes down. So it's bureaucracy is a reason why this hasn't come through. It, yeah. It, it, it's just like my opinion. I'm guessing that's probably your opinion as well. That yeah, bureaucracy is what's holding this up now. Um, so where are we taking this next? What's the next step for you? Well, I'm uh, working on China so because they have a really big problem there with air pollution. Mm, which we've all probably seen videos of online of China's yeah, air pollution. Yeah. yeah, And of course, it can be installed in all the cars and, and, and so on. But the power station are the biggest offenders. The coal-fired power station is the biggest And how many offender. of those have they got in China, do you reckon? Well, according to my Google research, uh, there is way over 1,000 anyway. Wow. Like I remember when wow. John Howard was premier, premier, uh, prime minister in Australia, he was talking about China open up one coal-fired power station every week. Mm. So anyway, um, there might be 2,000, close to 2,000 coal-fired power stations, Incredible. you know. Yeah, hence the need for, for a cleaner air. Yeah, this sort of system that you've devised could literally clean up China's air in a matter of years. Yeah, yeah. and of course, India is coming up uh, behind there with a lot of uh, coal-fired power stations, and this would be actually uh, good for Australia as well because mm -hmm. if we can uh, export coal, and um, not cause a lot of pollution in the process, that that would be a good thing. Right, because a lot of the coal that China is burning comes from our own backyard, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah. yeah. So there's a good way to, to, um, to help clean it up. Now, you've also run for local government as an in um, What was the reason behind that? Why did you want to try and get into involved in, in government? Well... Did you think thought, you could make a change to try and get these sort of things over the line? Well, that's what I was thinking. There was a way of potentially changing the law because I don't want to um, break the law. I like to be on the right side of the of law. Of course, yeah. yeah. And, um, but anyway, I didn't get enough votes there. So maybe next time I got approached by some other party now which uh, could possibly, uh, I might possibly join. So it could be another avenue to try and... Yeah. Further that career as well, yeah. and to try and yeah get these things across the line. So do you, do you have any, do you have much faith in um, in that sort of system, or do you think it could be you know 
uh, almost a bit of a dead end to trying and change it from the inside? Well, Australia, I believe, is a good country. I like it. That's my home. I lived here for almost 60 years. But, of course, there's still room for improvement. It's not perfect, mm. you know. There's still room for improvement. So uh, my latest thoughts is actually um, I was watching uh, Elon Musk, the co-founder of uh, Tesla Motors. Tesla, yeah, Tesla they Technology, built this yeah. gigafactory in the Arizona desert, and I thought, well, we've got lots of desert here, so if we can produce water, and, and the air is often 80% water, so you can actually extract water from the air, and if you can then grow your own food, like in aqua... Ponics, yep. and uh, we could we could uh, feed eat. the world, power the world. Yeah, <laughs> you've got you've got great vision, Peter. It's um it's brilliant to see that uh, you know there's a, a a local chap in our own very backyard who's got these sort of hopes and dreams and ideas, and who's really putting himself out there. He's an inventor. He's come up with some amazing technology, um, and really that's the only thing that's sort of stopping us and stopping these sort of things. You know, um, going forth is is our very own government. So Peter's obviously tried to change that from within. Um, I guess he was unsuccessful the first time, but he's not giving up, folks. He's here to stay. Um, we are talking to Peter Ervig right here today, and thanks for joining us here at realnewsaustralia.com. Thanks for your time, Peter. You're very welcome. Cheers. Thank you.